Hey, good morning everyone. Welcome back to Morning Brew. So glad you chose to be with us this morning as we uh, just continue to dive into the scripture. I appreciate all the people who help with Morning Brew and uh, pour their time and effort into studying the scripture and uh, bringing us devotions on Friday mornings. I, I pray that you're encouraged by that and that um, that you are, as we like to say, propelled further in your walk with the Lord and uh, that the Lord is doing some good things in your life. and So I just want to do the same thing this morning. Um, and so it's my turn to get a chance at Morning Brew. And so I want to look at a, a scripture that might be familiar to you. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, but uh, at least it is for me. It's a scripture I remember as a kid growing up uh, learning. And it's probably one of the more popular Old Testament passages. It's called Psalm 23. And I don't know if you've ever really spent any time looking at Psalm 23, but the uh, King David writes this psalm, and um, there's so much in this psalm that is so relevant to us today. Uh, David is going to call the Lord his shepherd, um, and uh, we see an illustration of that in John 10 as well in the New Testament that Jesus is our shepherd. We should know his voice, and if we know his voice, we should follow and be obedient to his voice, and all that kind of stuff. But the stuff that David writes and the, the terminology that he uses in this uh, these, these few verses here um, speak to us in terms of our response to him, to God. Also, how God responds to us and what God does for us and how he gives us what we need and um, all those different things. So we're going to just read. I'm going to read the entire uh, chapter. It's only six verses. And then I'm just going to go through them verse by verse just for a few moments and just point out a couple things from them that maybe maybe would help you as you relate to your Father in Heaven, as you think about Him being a shepherd of your soul, uh, someone who loves you and cares for you and nurtures you and protects you and guides you and all those different things. So let's just read this. I'm reading out of the New International Version, uh, the newest version of New International uh, Bible. It says in Psalm 23, this is in verse 1, we'll read the whole chapter first. The Bible says, David says, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside quiet waters, he refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Uh, this is such a, an amazing section of scripture, and I want to just look at a couple things from this that at least jump out to me as I read Psalm 23. He starts off in verse 1 and he says, The Lord is my shepherd. Uh, a shepherd was more than just a person out there in a field watching a whole bunch of sheep wander around. A shepherd didn't just go and sit down and idly uh, stand on the sideline, but a shepherd was a guide. A shepherd had to guide those sheep to areas of protection, uh, areas where there was good food, areas where there was water. Uh, he made sure that they were well cared for. He made sure that they were led in the places that was going to help them flourish and become all that they could be. And that's exactly who God is to us. He shepherds us. He leads us. He guides us into areas that he knows this is going to be best for us. And so when he commands us to do certain things in life that we might balk against, let's remember he's the shepherd. We're the sheep. He knows best. He is wanting us to flourish. He is wanting us to be um, who he wants us to be and who he has designed us to be. Let's trust his leadership as our shepherd. One more thing in verse 1, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. It's one thing to say God is God. It's one thing to say that Jesus is Lord, but it's another thing to make it personal. And David said, he's my shepherd. Um, is that who you call Jesus? Is he your Lord? Is he my savior? Is he my direction? Is he my guide? Is he our personal um, leader in our life? Second verse, he says, he makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside quiet waters. Green pastures, uh, when I think of this, I think of like a, a meadow beside a mountain 
stream and you can hear the water rippling and there's no other noise you're on the middle of nowhere and you can just kick back and relax there by the water's edge there's enough food to eat there's water there it's quiet it's not turbulent god leads us to those places at times that it's good to rest in the lord it's good to rest in the promises of god he wants us to be peaceful uh, in our mind because of the storm that's going on all around us we can be rooted in the promises and the faithfulness of god Verse 3 says that he refreshes my soul. Uh, in God, there is restoration. Uh, he refreshes us. There's a recharging, a rejuvenation of our life, right? We know that the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us uh, helps to regenerate us to be more like Jesus. Those areas that were dead now come to life. Those areas that were poison and sin now become vessels that God can use. He goes on, he says, he guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Um, if you uh, if you are a, been in the church for a long time, maybe you remember years ago, the translation, a little bit different, just the verbiage was a little bit different. It says the same thing, but said he guides me in the paths, uh, paths of righteousness, right? He's leading us toward righteous living, points us in the right direction so we can flourish. Verse four, even though I walk through the darkest valley, um, uh, that, that idea of the darkest valley it used to say uh, in some translations, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, meaning there is darkness around us, there is evil around us, there is uh, persecution against the believers all around us. He says, uh, even though I walk in that valley, uh, I will fear no evil, right? Because it is God who lights our path. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to my path. Uh, he says, I am the light of the world. That's what Jesus says. Um, I will fear no evil. God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline, the Bible says. And he says, I will not fear evil because, in verse 4, you are with me. Um, the promise of the presence of God. Hebrews chapter 13, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you, is what God says. In John 14, 15, and 16, Jesus over and over again tells them that the Holy Spirit is going to be given to them as a counselor, as a guide, as an ever-dwelling presence of God himself. He goes on, he says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We know that about a shepherd. Uh, the typical uh, shepherd look was a shepherd with a shepherd's staff, and you got this long staff that had a hook on the end of it. He says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me, right? The rod there, um, most shepherds' staffs and rods had a metal tip to the end of them uh, that was hardened. It was used to protect the sheep. It was used to fight off wild animals. It was strong. That that staff had some backbone in it so it could ward off any predators that were coming against the sheep. God does that for us. He protects us. Also, we see that shepherd's hook. A shepherd's hook, if needed, could wrap that shepherd's hook around uh, the neck of a sheep and draw that sheep close to uh, the shepherd. Jesus does that for us. He draws us uh, close to him as well. Verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. means that God's going to honor us. If the world is dishonoring us, we know that God honors us. The Bible tells us in Matthew's gospel that whoever acknowledges, Jesus says, whoever acknowledges me before men, I will acknowledge you. I mean, I will raise you up. I will honor you. I will exalt you in your life. You anoint my head with oil. We know that blessings come from the Lord in an overflowing manner. God wants to dump so many blessings on us that we wouldn't know how to handle all of them. Surely your goodness, verse 6, your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life. I love that idea that his love and his goodness follow us. Regardless of where we go and regardless of our decisions we make, his love and his, his uh, graciousness and his goodness follow us. Uh, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter uh, eight that nothing will separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then he says, finally, in, in, in that verse, he says, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There is an eternal dynamic of this relationship that we look forward to, that it's not just on earth that we enjoy the protection and oneness and fellowship with the Father, but in the glory, we're going to have that for eternity. And we get to have that because of what he has done for us in the work of the cross and what Jesus has done for us. And so uh, be encouraged by that. We have a good shepherd. Uh, he knows us and he loves us. Uh, John chapter 10 says the shepherd knows us so much and loves us so much that he was willing to lay his life down, right, uh, for us. And so be encouraged by that. Know that the shepherd wants good for you and wants to bless you. 
and uh, be encouraged by that. Let me pray for us today. God, we just thank you. We thank you for the example of scripture that we have here. We thank you for what you have done in the work of Jesus for us, that Jesus has been, become our shepherd, that he leads and he protects and he guides us to things that will help us become who you want us to be. He protects us from our enemy. He gives us opportunity to defeat the enemy through uh, resisting temptation. God, you protect us in the darkest moments of our life. You give us your presence in all these things, God. And we trust you with our life. And so thank you for leading us. Help us, God. Help us, God, to put our full confidence in what you can do. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, guys, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, hopefully you'll uh, join us again next week for Morning Brew or uh, the morning devotions that we have every weekday morning. Anyway, you guys have a good day, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on Sunday. God bless. Thank you.